Today is November 20th, 2013, and we are at the James A. Lovell Medical Health Center. My name is Cheryl Walker, and I'm with the Illinois State Library. I am going to be interviewing George Alexander Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez was born February 5th, 1958. Um, Mr. Rodriguez, I will be recording you, and for the record, I would like for you to state what branch of service you served in and what's your highest rank that you achieved and what years you served in the service. And did you enlist or were you drafted? Okay, I had enlist in uh, 1978 uh, till 1982, uh, September of 1978, and I uh, uh, got an honorable discharge in 1980, sorry, 1981 in September, and uh, it's the United States Army. And from there, I went to also to AFE. I uh, got an honorable discharge in 1981. I went to Air National Guard, Air Force, and and for another six years. What was your highest rank? I was an E-4 in the United States Army, and but when I transferred to the Air Force, I became a sergeant. Okay. At this time, would you like to share your military history and story with us? Sure, I would like to. I um, I com I complete um, I, uh, I I I enlisted in, um, from I enlisted in the service, and I went to um, I enlisted in 1978. And from there, I went to uh, Fort Gordon, Georgia, and uh, and I went training uh, for almost uh, close to about seven seven or eight months in telecommunication uh, repair. And uh, then after that, I had to wait for my clearance because my orders was to go to Germany, and I was stationed in Germany in Heidelberg, in NATO headquarters. And NATO headquarters, uh, it's, uh, at that time, we still had the Cold War, and it was a hush-hush situation where, uh, where I worked. And, uh, and before, I even, before I went to Germany, they did a thorough background on me. Uh, they even have men came to my, went to New York City in my home, talking to my friends and my family. And uh, my parents got a little nervous, wanted to know what was this all about, but found out it was nothing to worry. It was for me to get my clearance. They wanted to know what kind of character I was, what kind of individual I was, did I talk to myself, did I have a lot of friends, you know, uh, what, uh, you know, what was my background, my personality. And the reason they did this, to get this information, because I, 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 for me to work in NATO headquarters and have, in telecommunication, I had to work in comm centers and sometimes go to the Primazons on down in Germany under the cave, and I had to have a top secret clearance. So, because even though I was a repairman in telecommunications, I went into these buildings where there's no windows at all. The air conditioning in these buildings, all metal doors, got to go through tight security, and then all I did is repair these machines. And a lot of these machines that I fixed was telex, where they have machines that information going to crypto and microwave and then come back all over Europe and other places. And a lot of these times I have to read this information to make sure that the print comes out of these telex comes out, come out okay. And it's amazing what you read. I won't, can't give you any details, but we do spy in other diplomats and it tells you exactly what they do out there. They, when they have coffee, when they go to the bathroom, where they go, who they meet, and this is what I read to make sure that the print comes out okay because this printout have to go to the general. So I, and I and but this but since I read it and make sure the type there's no type error with these telex, I leave that place without thinking about it anymore. But just to let you know, that's what I did, and you have to be real careful who you talk to in Germany at that time because it was a Cold War. Because any information you give out, what you do, or how many people work there, or they ask you what kind of work you do, I cannot talk about it. Because a lot of 
we have a lot of other spies out there that want to know what's going on. So, uh, you know, and like I said, this is what I did. And I, they had my trust. I, all I did was compare these machines, went to different places. Uh, I went to Mannheim. So I went to the corner stool up the hill in Heidelberg. And all I did was repair these uh, telex. Even though all of these information that I looked at, it was top secret, confidential, you know, and just did my job. And that's all I, and, and, and kept my mouth closed, you know. And so I got an honorable discharge. I got a, uh, after I completed, I got a medal of conduct for my services. Um, and from there on, um, um, and then we had a situation with the uh, where we was going to be transferred to on a navy ship, because we had we had our we had to get all our weapons ready to go because Jimmy Carter was present at the time and they put us on alert that we was going to go on a navy ship by by the ocean by near Iran because of the hostage situation, and so we were ready for that. So that was that was kind of scary, but we were ready, you know. And so this is my experience that I went through, and I I, I enjoyed being in the military. Um, I enjoyed what I, I was doing, repairing things, and um, you know, uh, even though at that time it was Vietnam era, but I missed Vietnam. And between seventy eight to eighty one, the only crisis we had was the Iran hostage situation. So that was on the borderline if we were going to go in or not, you know. And so, but we were ready because Heidelberg, Germany was much closer, you know. So, um, and then I completed my service. That's it. You know, so I, 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 I very interesting out there. Uh, people in Germany is very interesting. Uh, I've been to a lot of places. I've been to, uh, uh, I've been into Switzerland, Sweden. I've been into Holland. You know, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Europe is very gorgeous. And I enjoyed my work working in a comm center. And then while working in NATO headquarters, you meet Canadian soldiers, French soldiers, German soldiers, British, Greek soldiers. You meet them all over. It's amazing. You know, you meet all, you know, because NATO is part of other alliance that is that's that works in Heidelberg. And that's it. Then I'm while working in NATO, did you just fix our telecommunication lines? That's it. Only ours. Those are the only ones I repair. Uh, we had a lot of comm centers there, uh, and these comm centers were uh, brick buildings, red, no windows, just metal doors, and security was tight. They check when you come in, then they check your tools when you come out. Make sure you don't bring no papers or no anything. You know, so it's uh, it's a hush hush area and it's tight security, and you got to keep your nose clean, because they you know they you know if, if you go out and if you do something dumb out there you know, you could lose your clearance. You know they need somebody that is you know somebody that's uh, confidence and 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 loyal, and and I was, I did my job what I supposed to do, I kept communication running. And did you um. Were you on a base? Uh, no, I was off base because they didn't. Heide, uh, Heidelberg and Nanahog, they had, they had, it was a base, but it was mostly communication building and, you know, other administrative buildings. We didn't have, we didn't have barracks. We had to live off station, but it was like a barracks off station. And so we lived in a, a co head where we had men and women living in the barracks. And it was a two man room. And, 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 Many times, a uh, lot of lot of uh, enlistments that was there. You know, a lot of them were operators that send these informations. Many of them got in trouble because a lot of them uh, play their music so loud. And since you're in a, a town in Heidelberg, you know the Polish eyes response. The Polish eyes of the police, and they tell you if your music we come again with your loud music, we'll take it away. You know, so you had to be. So, so we lived we lived off station because they didn't have. A barracks for us, you know. They didn't have military barracks. We had to live off station. They must have rented a big building for us, to, you know, a big building for us to live a two-man room, uh, and it was it was a very large building too, you know. And uh, and it was, you know, and and that's that's how you know we lived. And we, um, you know, we crossed the street into the into the uh, 
NATO headquarters, and then that's where we worked. You know, we worked different hours. I worked weekends. You know, we worked shifts, rotating shifts. If there's a machine down two or three in the morning and I was on call, they wake me up. They pick me up on a jeep, and I go straight out there and fix their communication. This communication is a 24/7, nonstop, and we get and we and we rotate on shifts. Who gets the weekend next weekend? Who's going to stay up? And you got to be around there for them to. To get, get a hold of you to fix those machines. It could be any time. It could be one thirty, two o'clock, or one three, four, any time. And and they'll and, and they'll have to, you have to respond and you have to go repair those machines, because communication is the backbone backbone for the military. You know, because we have telex, we have crypto, we have microwave there. So, you know, so you know, and uh, you know, and you know, but I like I said, but I I lost hearing for that too. You know, yeah, I lost some of my hearing. You know working, doing that for almost, almost four years. And how come that is? The uh, reason is that because when you, when you go in and repair these machines, you have to hear them if they're making, because they're mechanical, they're, or they're, they're, they're electromechanic, they're electromechanic machines. And you got to hear them what they're doing. It's like a car when you have to listen to cars, see how they sound. Same thing with these telex. They, these tex, these are Klein Smiths, they call Klein Smiths telex. And you have to hear them. So you can't have hearing aid, even though they tell you when you walk in the door, you need hearing aid protection. But we couldn't wear it if we can't hear what the machine's doing. So we had to take it off to see how yeah, these machines work. And we could hear them and know where the problem is to repair it. So usually we never use the hearing aid because we had to hear these machines, how it operates and what it's doing. If it's causing a malfunction, we could hear it where it's at and we could repair it. Now, how long was your schooling for this? It's, I think it was about seven months, eight months. So yeah, it it's long. an extensive schooling. Yeah, it was an extensive school. I was there for a while. Yeah, you know, so it was it was good. It was uh, it was it was a while. You know, maybe maybe seven months. I think I was there. Yeah, you know, I was there for a while. Uh, it's an extensive school. It's a very long school. Now, did you get to choose your M I M O S? Um, yes, I did. I mean, I had a lot of options uh, when I first got in, when I first re-enlisted, and I took the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the batting test. It's a, it's a test that you take when you first get in. And they said I score 108 in electronics, so I was good in electronics. So I got into communication because I, I liked electronics. So I told them, you got anything in electronics? They said, yeah, we have 31J, telex repair. You want to do it? I said, fine. But I had no idea where I was going from there. <laughs> you know, I just took the school, and I, then from there I went to basic training in South uh, uh, South Carolina. I went basic training in Fort Jackson, and then after I completed my uh, ten weeks of basic training, I went to Georgia, Fort Gordon, Georgia, and I went there about seven months for, for the communication. And after I completed that, I went straight to Germany. And you stayed in Germany your whole time. My whole time, my whole time, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, how many were in your MOS class? I believe maybe about 20. 20 I think about 20. Did all 20 go to Germany? No, a lot of they went other places. They, they, some went other places. I that I won't know, but I know, you know, I know I was the only one that went to Germany in NATO headquarters because I was, when I got to, uh, I, when I got to Germany airport, they picked me up in a Jeep over there. And I was the only one with my duffel bag waiting to be reassigned in the, you know, at NATO headquarters. You know, and then they, they, they send you to class for two weeks to learn German about money. You know, it's called an orientation. And so they send you a class for two weeks, and it, I mean, can't really learn much how to speak German in two weeks, but they try. You know, you learn at least you learn the money value. So it was very interesting. Um, you know, so I, I, I think, you know, I, I think I, I, I enjoyed a lot, and it was amazing. I mean, you have to understand, you know, I was 18, and uh, when I left, and uh, uh, you know, I, all I knew was New York. You know, and I haven't been anywhere else. You know, so you get to see a different world. What made you, at 18, decide to enlist? Well, I, my, my parents didn't have money at that time. And, um, and I, uh, 
I didn't want to go to college, you know, and so I, you know, I just wanted to, uh, I want to travel, I want to get away from New York. Um, and so I, I, I thought maybe, you know, going in the army and, and I wanted to travel, I want to learn a trade, you know, teach you a trade and, and so I just wanted an experiment to see how, how this to go in. I just wanted to enlist and I, I thought it was very, uh, I think it would be very good for me because, you know, the job market at that time in 78 wasn't that good either. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, and so I didn't want to go continue schooling. So I decided to join the service, you know, and, and to see what I can get out of it, you know, and, and I got a lot out of it. It was very interesting, uh, you know, and uh, you meet people from all over the states, you know, and now and you meet people from all over Europe. When I worked at when I, you know, uh, let's see when I went to the Parmesans down in, in, in Germany, you know, they, had, they have a big mountain and underneath they have a cave. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. And all you see is brass, generals, generals. That's all you see up there. Majors and generals. <laughs> you know, and I'm here with my little hat with my toolbox. You know, I'm just, that time was what, me too, you know. You know, so it was interesting. You see, yeah. But, uh, but, 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 but it was a mission, you know, like any other mission, you know, even though it was peacetime, but it was a mission and we had to do our job, you know. Yeah. You were in Germany at a time that, like you said, Vietnam was over. Right. Um, World War II. Correct. Was over. Korean War was over. Um, Germany possibly uh, was really recovered from World War II. Oh, yeah. They were. They um, were recovered. Yeah. But I mean, but you had problems there. I mean, we have riots, not riots, but we don't call it riots. So it was I call it our protesting. They don't. They didn't want the military there. So there was a lot of activists there that say military go home. They didn't want us there. And so the Polozites comes out with the police. They come out with the water truck, you know, and then of course our MPs protects the headquarters, you know, at NATO headquarters. So you, you got once in a while. A movement going that wants the military out, and then you got some of them. They want the military here because we they do hire your German people to work there too. So you got it, you know. On yeah, you, know, you have a conflict, and then sometimes you don't. You know, you got it on both ways. Some people want us there, and so other people want us out. Yeah, so you get those problems there too. Yeah, go ahead. But. So you you had you had both hands were some wanted to some didn't want to. Did you ever feel that unsafe there? Oh no, I, I felt very safe there. I felt very safe there. I think that probably first time I felt very safe there. You know, um, I you know compare me you know me living in New York. You know, <laughs> they're not safe there. It's always something going down over there. You know, but no, I really felt safe there. I, I, like I said, I, I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I just wish I, I could pick up the language much better because, because being in Germany is very difficult. It's not that easy. You know, but no, I, I felt very safe there. You know, um, um, you know, um, as long as you know, it all depends. You know, you know what you do there too. You know what I mean? Because certain areas, you know, like for instance, like they were, they had the Olympics in Russia, you know, at that time, and I wanted to go, and I had a hard time going. There was too much red tape. They, they gave me a run around, and bottom line, they didn't want me to go because of my clearance and what I knew. So I couldn't go to Russia and see the Olympics. So that was squashed. So that's how it is. You know. So, so things. And, and it makes sense because you just don't know when you go there because they may think you know something and I, to me they I don't know anything but they think you do you know what I mean and and of course the government thinks you know something so they don't want to be they want to be on the safe side you know you know and any bits of information you leak out they put those things they put pieces together that's how they do it you know 
So you got to still be careful out there, who you speak to, what you do. You, know, you don't talk about your job. You don't talk about your job to anybody. The only reason I'm talking now because of cold waters, cold waters, cold war is over now. I don't have nothing, I have nothing. I'm not giving any any details. All I'm saying, what we really do, right. and that's why when I hear about NSA, NSA, and you know, spying, they've been doing that since I was 18 years old. <laughs> Worse than that, <laughs> you know. So I kind of laugh at it. So just the way American is, you know. You know, business companies do the same. You know, I worked for a lot of business companies. I worked for a company when I got out. But go ahead, for any questions. Did, <clears throat> did you do any traveling in Germany? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been to uh, Switzerland. I've been to Sweden. I've been to Austria. Um, I've been on France, on the countryside of France. I've been in Holland. Um, I've been in all parts of, 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 of the, uh, uh, Germany, uh, Mannheim, Stuttgart, Frankfurt. Um, and uh, I, think, I don't know if I left anything else, but yes, I seen all that. It's beautiful. I mean, skiing in Austria is gorgeous, you know. Mm -hmm. So no, I, I I travel, you know, where I could travel, where they where they let me, you know, you know, and and it was great, no problems, you know. Um, that's why I didn't go home. I mean, I might as well just stay here and get to see other places, you know. You know, as long as it's not Berlin, <laughs> East Berlin, because can't go there, because we had the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the, you know, can't go down there. You know, uh, yeah, go, if we go down there, then we have a lot of questions to answer. And I don't want that problem, you know. Did you go to the wall? No, 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 won't go there. No, uh, I never went to the wall. You know, I just don't, I don't want to go somewhere where later on, I, you know, I'll be questioned later. Because but I, I believe that the, the, a lot of them will know. You know. I mean, I mean, if you got a high clearance and you're in, in and you work in a comm center, you know, you know, I, I, you know, we had CIDs in our where we lived. You know, CIDs called Central Intelligence Division. You know, so you gotta be careful what you do. You know, and uh, uh, there's a lot of people that lost their clearance. You know, because they were they got caught do, doing hashish. A lot of them lost their clearance. They they went to see. They, I had one person who was, lost his clearance. Uh, went into the motor pool because he went to uh, uh, a brothel, you know, prostitution. So you, gotta, you know, so you can't do that. Can't do any of that. You gotta, you know, you gotta you gotta go. You know, and uh, and and uh, you know, and when you lose your clearance, they put you in a motor pool. You can't be in a comp center anymore. You know, so so you gotta be real careful what you do. And these these are things that I heard. So I keep my nose clean, do my job, do my time, and then move on. When you got out of the service, you said you came home sorry, sorry. Sorry. and went into the Air Force right. Reserve. That's correct. And how long were you in the Air Force Reserve? Uh, six years. And what did you do in the Air Force Reserves? Um, I um, when I got in there, they didn't have uh, they. When I got in reserve, they wanted to send me back to school again. Okay, so uh, because the MOS thirty one J that I had, they didn't, they had it, but they felt that they didn't, they didn't need anybody there. What they need somebody is to work in telephone switching. And it's another form of communication. And that's dealing with uh, special phone lines, you know, communication of phone lines, you know. Uh, so it's called telephone switching, but it's it's a very old type of switching. But it, and, and that was a six months course. And I went to Shepherd Air Force Base for six months, and I, and I, and and it was all electronics. And then after the electronics, we talk about the equipment. So you learn you, you learn all, you learn all these you learn all these electronic stuff. And then after after that, I complete the six months uh, schooling. Um, then I went, you know, in Shepherd Air Force in Texas. I came back, uh, you know, back back to California because I left New York and went to California. I went back to California, and uh, then I served my every other weekend, you know, uh, reserves. One weekend a month, I think it was that was one weekend a month, and then two weeks out of the year. Those two weeks, we go to different places. Like I went to Nellis Air Force Base to set up communication there on a Nellis Air Force Base, in, uh, and that was in Nevada. Very nice place, very nice. Beautiful, hot, but it's beautiful. 
And so I went there. So, uh, you know, and then I got an honorable discharge from the Air National Guard. And, well, first I got the United States, you know, uh, the Army, not honorable discharge. And I got another one for Air National Guard. You know, and then when I, then I got out, uh, eventually, um, I think at the age of 20, I think 25, 26, I, um, I um, got into federal police. Uh, uh, I became a police officer for the federal government. Uh, where I was a DOD, Department of Defense Police Officer. And I worked that for many years. And then I got transferred. I went to a lot of places because a lot of bases was closing. Then I got transferred to other places. And I, I, worked, in, uh, I worked in Texas for four years. And one year in Arizona as a police in Yuma. And then, uh, and before that, it was Oakland Army Base, you know. And then eventually, I I applied for the VA police, and I got the VA police. So I got almost good 17 years as a police officer in in the federal government. And uh, and I and I took a retirement because I hurt my back. I hurt my back. Yeah, my back because I hurt my back in the service. Um, and I hurt I hurt it pretty bad. And then uh, but like 21 but you know the doctor did an x-ray but all he said it was it's a it's a hairline fracture in your spine so it was no big deal for them told me rest for two days and then go back to work and and it was fine after two days and I went back to work but I had to lift these heavy machines you know to install a lot of these machines so over the years it was just getting worse and worse you know and it got really bad to the point that you know the other time that couldn't get up you know and and so, uh, so I didn't really take care of it that I should, you know. But eventually, you know, I, I ended up having two hernia discs in my back because of the hairline fracture and um, arthritis, you know. And so, uh, I, you know, so that, and that, you know, so so eventually, uh, at seven, at seven, after seventeen years with the police force, I couldn't do it anymore because you had to carry a gun, you got to carry all the equipment, you have to wrestle people sometimes, you know couldn't do it no more, you know, and eventually, you know, they said, if I continue doing them, then I'm going to not be able to walk, and because I had a lot, I took a lot of medicine for the pain, but, and that's, that's, that's what I did after, after 17 years, and I took a retirement out of it, you know, a disability retirement, because my back was really not, and I love the job, because I like people, I like to help people, I like to go out there and help them. You know, that's my job. And for this type of job, you have to like people. So, and anything, any questions? <clears throat> uh, you, um, what made you, instead of going into the Army Reserve, what made you choose the Air Force Reserve? Um, okay, well, what happened was that after I, I, after I completed my four years active duty in the United States Army, I, they sent me back to New York. Um, I went into, um, um, I was trying to get into, I wanted, I wanted to go back and, and, and be a weekend warrior, you know, because it was, because the money was good at that time, it was paying at that time it was paying one hundred and twenty dollars every other weekend, or oh, I mean every one one weekend a month. So one hundred twenty dollars helps out, and then and it was good because you know I kind of like get together with other with other uh, reserves officers and other other veterans there and we talk about our experience. So, um, but I didn't stay. I couldn't. I didn't stay in 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 New York. I left New York. Uh, and I went because I moved. I moved to California where my twin sister was, and I, I lived with her for a while, you know. And then I got into an Air National Guard in California because they didn't have no army base at that time for me to go. It was too far. So the closest place for me, while I lived in Oakland, was Hayward Air National Guard in Hayward. So that was not too far. So I joined the um, the Air National Guard Air Force Reserve. You know, and um, and at that time, uh, I stayed in California for almost ten years. Ten years, but I had a lot of different jobs before that. Before I became a police officer in DOD and Department of Defense in Oakland, I worked at UC Berkeley as a staff. 
I was a computer uh, support group. Yeah, I, what I did is, you know, uh, I pulled fiber optics and Ethernet. You know, so that didn't help my back either. So it made it worse. But I only did that for a couple of years. You know, but then I stayed, I stayed with DOD police for a while. Um, but anyway, um, so the reason I I joined the the Air National Guard, I I I thought it was very I, li I like it because you go one week in the marketing and out of the two weeks out of the year you go away, you go different places and your job will let you go for two weeks. You know what I mean? And 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 and, and you, your job will still be there. You know, they cannot discriminate or they cannot just fire you if you're not there. For, you know, because I go to these weekend drills two weeks out of the year, and when I come back, I still go back to my old job. You know, so it was good. And those two weeks I get paid. You know, I may use my vacation time for those two weeks, but I get paid twice. So I get paid for the vacation time plus the two weeks that I'm on. Yeah. You know, and and you have and and you had to live that way. You know, because California is a very expensive place. You know, so cost of living is very high, and it's still high. You know, you know. So. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um. No, I, I think, you know, not much. I mean, I just, um, you know, right now, you know, I'm retired now. And, but what I know now, I'm, a, I'm, I work for, I work for, I'm, um, I'm in Chapter 16 DAV, Disabled Veterans of America. I'm a, um, right now, I'm a, a junior vice commander, but I will be the commander next year. Uh, so I'll, I'll be taking more responsibility in, in uh, my organization, Chapter 16. Uh, I'm also a VAVS uh, representative for the hospital, uh, and uh, I coordinate, uh, you know, volunteers, uh, um, um, you know, people that are helping me. Um, to, uh, what I do mostly is, is I give out canteen books, and I help people with their uh, claims for the disability claims. I also help, I tell them where, where they need to go if a lot of them are homeless veterans. I, find, I got place who they could speak to, people, contacts, you know, uh, we have, uh, also have contacts in the Veterans Assistant Program for Lake County residents in Illinois. And, you know, and also other people that deals with uh, transitioning officers, uh, enlistments, uh, military, trans that's leaving the military and going to civilian world. I got a person that deals with that. So I'm kind of like, I help these veterans to get in these areas, to get them on their feet, because when I got out in uh, 1981, I didn't get no help, Phil. So there was no help for nobody when I got out. They didn't look for a job. They didn't prepare you in the, civ in, in, in the, in, in the civilized world. I mean, in civilian world, it didn't help you at all. You just, they just threw you out and said, good luck. And it was very difficult, but you know, I made it, you know, eat, you know, and um, eventually, um, I'm here in Illinois now for 14 years, and I like the state of Illinois. It's very nice. I live in Lake County. I lived in Libertyville, you know, and I sold my home, you know, because, uh, and now I live in Lakemore, you know, and it's it's beautiful, very quiet, very nice, uh, you know. Um, so that's all I want to say. I just realized that, you know, I, you know I, I think I accomplished a lot, and I'm doing a lot for the veterans now, and, um, and, and and that's who I am. Well, at this time, George, I would like to thank you for the time that you gave our country. Thank you. And the time that you served our country. Um, and I would also like to thank you for the honor you have given me for being able to partake in your um, interview and hear your history and your story. Thank you. Thank you.